Hi, it's Katie from Katie Cooks and Crafts, and I have another food prep video. Today I'm starting with washing some lettuce. I got four big heads of lettuce, so I'm gonna clean it all at once and store it in the refrigerator. So I'm just peeling the leaves off of the head, and I'm just gonna soak them in this sink full of cool water. So after I remove all of the leaves from all of the heads of lettuce, I'm just going to just kind of smoosh it around a little bit to uh, loosen any dirt and debris and just let them sit in this cool water for 10 or 15 minutes. Then I'm gonna pack them up in a plastic container, but I've got a cloth napkin in the bottom to catch any excess moisture. And I'm going to spin the lettuce in my salad spinner. If you don't have a salad spinner, you can also just bundle up the lettuce in a clean kitchen towel and um, just kind of dry it that way. You just want to get as much moisture off of the lettuce as possible. Then once I have it spun dry, I'm just going to pack it into the plastic container and just be delicate with it. You don't want to break the leaves or bruise them. Um, you want to keep them as whole as possible so that they last as long as possible. Then I'm just covering them with another clean cloth napkin and closing up the container and putting it in the refrigerator. Next I'm going to work on some other produce. I got this prickly pear or cactus fruit and this is the first time that I've tried this so I actually watched a different YouTube video to learn how to do this and I'll link that video down below if you want to see the original. But all I'm doing is cutting both ends off of the fruit and inside you can see a really rich red color. Then I'm going to slice down one side through the skin and just peel the skin back. And at first I was pulling just the topmost layer in it. It wasn't peeling back as easy as the video I saw showed, but the problem was I didn't have the full thickness of the skin. So once I got underneath the full thickness of the skin, the fruit popped out really easily. It peels nearly as easily as a banana. And it comes out nice and clean like that. And for this, we were gonna just have it as part of our dinner just to try it out. So I'm just gonna slice it onto a plate. You can see there's some large sort of seeds inside. I'm just gonna slice it up and just pop it in the refrigerator until we're ready to eat it with dinner. The next thing I have here is a jackfruit. I also watched a YouTube video the first time I prepared this. The jackfruit has sort of a sticky sap, so you wanna oil up your hand and your knife so that it's easier to clean off. And I'm just cutting out that center core with my paring knife. I just cut all the way around it and then just pull that core out. And you want to make sure that if there's any fruit stuck to the core, you remove that as well. You don't want to lose any of this fruit. It's so delicious and sweet and fragrant. So make sure you get any of the orange fruit that's stuck to the core. And then if you kind of pull open the fruit, you'll see there's a bunch of little orange pouches or little pockets of flesh all in amongst these sort of inedible white petally grass-like things. So just pull out a bundle of the orange and pull off anything that's not orange. So any of those whitish petals or any little bits of the core that's stuck to the top or the rind that's stuck to the bottom. And then inside there's a large seed, so you'll wanna remove that as well. And what you're left with is just pure yellow flesh. And I'm just gonna tear it into bite-sized pieces to make it easier to eat. And then once you pull them all out, you wanna look closely. It's kinda of like an Easter egg hunt. And sometimes you can find uh, some hiding in there. So make sure you look closely. You don't wanna waste any of this fruit and then just cover the container with the jackfruit and put that in the refrigerator. Next I'm gonna make some mayonnaise. I'm gonna make some smoked chicken salad with one of the uh, smoked chickens that I made. So I'm just gonna mix together some egg yolk and Dijon mustard and slowly drizzle in some neutral flavored oil. I have a whole video showing how to make mayonnaise. If you wanna see that, I will link it down below. So after I put half of the oil in, I'm gonna stop and whip it up a little bit till it's smooth and creamy. 
And for flavoring, I'm gonna add some lemon juice. You can just add whatever you want to taste. You can add lemon juice or white wine vinegar is also a good option. So after I got the lemon juice in, I'm just gonna add the rest of the oil, then whip it up till it's really thick and creamy. And there's my mayonnaise all finished. Next, I'm gonna make some stock from the carcass from the smoked chickens. So I'm just gonna put two chickens worth of bones and all the uh, carcass leftovers in my pressure cooker. And I'm just gonna just barely cover it with water. Because there's not a lot of steam evaporation in the pressure cooker, you don't need to add a ton of water to make your stock. So you get a really rich concentrated stock. So I'm just gonna pressure cook that for about 20 minutes and then I let it cool just so that it's easier to handle. And I'm just gonna strain the broth. You can see how dark and rich the broth is. Um, that's because it, these were smoked chickens. And now I'm just gonna remove any last little bits of meat that were left on the bone. And I'm just dividing that extra meat in amongst these three um, plastic containers. And the bones and everything that's left over, I'm gonna put in a plastic bag. And that way I can tie the plastic bag up and dispose of it so it doesn't make my garbage stink. So I also have some leftover chicken meat from those smoked chickens. So I'm just gonna fill up the containers the rest of the way with some cut up chicken meat. And I wanna fill these containers about three quarters of the way full. So that's plenty of chicken for a nice size pot of soup. I'm gonna cover each container with the broth and by filling the broth on top of the meat, it will keep the meat from getting freezer burnt and it will also have the meat and the broth all together. So when I go to make soup, I have everything that I need. And because this broth is nice and concentrated, I can just add a little bit of water, my veggies, and then either barley or noodles, and I have my soup ready to go. The last thing I'm gonna work on this week is cleaning some shrimp. I almost always get the shell on shrimp because they're cheaper that way. So I'm just gonna remove all of the shells, just pull the legs off the bottom and then peel the shell back and then pop the tail off the end. As long as your shrimp are fresh, they should peel really easily. And once I have all of my shrimp peeled, I'm just going to collect all of the shrimp shells and I just keep them in the freezer. And then when I have three or four bundles this size, I'll go ahead and make some stock out of them. It's really good for gumbo or any sort of seafood soup or stew. And now I'm going to show you how to devein the shrimp. And there's a vein that runs along the back side and the underside. So you can see it through the underside there. There's also one that runs along the back side. So I'm just taking a sharp knife and just running the point along that vein that you can see, just slashing open the underside just very superficially. And then using the tip of my knife, I'm just gonna pull that discolored vein out from the underside of the shrimp. Like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing along the back side. So I'm just going to run my knife along the back ridge of the shrimp, just about an eighth of an inch or even less, just enough to get down inside there, and then spread it open, use the tip of my knife, and pull that vein out. Simple as that. But to be quite honest, I usually don't bother removing the vein. It's not something that bothers me that much, and it is rather tedious and time consuming to do. Um, but the cost savings to do it yourself is pretty significant, I think. So that's all the food prep I have for you this time. I hope you found it helpful and got a few tips out of it. Be sure to give my video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it, guys. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.